Welcome food fans, picky eaters, the flavor curious, and everyone in between. Nothing makes good food better than good conversation. And your table is ready. Come right this way to the Food for Thoughtcast with your host, Melissa Reagan. But you can call her chef. All right, let's get this episode started. Hey there, food fans. Welcome back to the Food for Thought cast with me, your host, Melissa Reagan, and my co-host with the most, Chef Steve Gonzalez. What's up, Steve? What's up, fellow Thoughtcasters? Hey. Ah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like it. How are you? I'm good. How, how's everything going? Oh, pretty amazing. Can't complain. So we're, we're a little, one, little ways into 2024. And, I was about to say, yeah. yeah, one week into the new year. Are you, uh, did you already give up on your resolution? Nope. Nope, I still, <laughs> but you, wait a minute. So if I remember correctly, you were resolved to not have a resolution. So did you change your mind and then get one or what's happening? Well, I half-assed it and then I already ah, gave I up see. on that half-assed effort. Ah, so there is also that. Got it, got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, hey, my friend. I <laughs> yeah. So I figured, you know, because we've been doing this uh, podcast for a good little while, we've talked a lot, but we, but you usually pick my brain. So I think today we're going to turn the tables and we're going to get to know Melissa just a oh, little bit further. The turntables. Got <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. It's a combination of like, you know, just very intense music and so. Yeah, yeah, I can add it in post. I usually never do, but I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I figured. Yeah, like I said, it's not only that, but it's always hard to like come up with something new and still like put our own you know opinions and thoughts on it. But I figured, yeah, like let's get down to like the bare basics of like who we are and what we do and like what makes us us, you know like it's something right. that the listeners i'm sure have been wondering about because we've heard you go on a cruise we've heard us talk about like fast food and what our favorite fast food is but like let's get to know you let's get to know me all right loaded questions what's your social security no i'm kidding we're not gonna ask stuff like that one zero niner <laughs> One one zero zero <laughs> green elemental P niner <laughs> right, robots now or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I found a list of questions that just you know, it's kind of like food related questions. And again, I figured this would be kind of you know just something different. You know, so we're gonna start off with like what your favorite food was as a kid. Well, Steve. We can't do it four episodes in a row. I got to ask you what the most amazing thing you ate this week was. Oh, <laughs> when we get we we did it late in the last episode, but we yeah, did. you know what? You're right. How rude of me. That's so okay. the most amazing thing that I had this week was it really wasn't even that good. We made some lobster mac and cheese, but it was like a frozen lobster tail, and it was mm. like just big to where it was just like really chewy, and the mac and cheese was all right, but. I was rather disappointed in myself. Man, I didn't put any love into it. Your New Year's related food choices have just gone down uh, episode by episode. You talked this big game on New Year's Eve, though. I did. Yeah, <laughs> um, it, it was just one of those things where you know, like, you have a day off and you uh, you do chores, you take care of business, and the next thing you know, like, the whole days have gone by, and you're like, I got to eat this lobster tail up before it goes bad. But at the same time, I also need to make dinner and. You know, I gotta make it taste good, but yeah. sometimes you have things in your house, in your freezer, your fridge, or your pantry that you oh. kind of gotta like use or lose it, and it doesn't fit into your it doesn't fit into your plans, and then it's like, eh, 
You know what? You're it's right. Like a- I have a freezer full of like sausages and fish that I caught <laughs> earlier this year. And I don't know what, I honestly don't know what kind of red meat I have in there. It's, I'm pretty sure it's venison. It's a, but I didn't label it. <laughs> sometimes uh, sometimes even chefs, meat. like we have to have a couple mediocre meals just to clean out. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, we can always make it good, but I didn't put any love into this one. So I own that myself. Loveless lobster mac and cheese. Heard. <laughs> but you know what I didn't put in there? Truffles. Thank you. I was going thank to, you, but you. then I thought, no, Melissa's going to be mad at me. So we're not going to make Melissa mad because I'm going to get kicked off of the podcast. You feel my wrath across the state <laughs> of Texas. <laughs> hey, Texas hell have no fury like Melissa and truffles. And Melissa's wrath. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what was the most amazing thing you had? Let's stop talking about me. Let's talk about you. Hey. So uh, a couple weeks before Christmas, I made a chorizo, potato, and leek soup. Mm. And um, I froze it. I couldn't eat it all. Um, hashtag single struggle. If you want to eat the same thing <laughs> six times, go for it. Right? Um, so I froze it. Tonight, I thawed it out, and I strained it. So I just took all the goodies out of the soup. And I added a can of um, rinsed and drained black beans. And then I ate it on tiny street corn tortillas that I charred on the stove with a little sour cream and salsa. So kind of like a picadillo meets beans um, in a tortilla. Yeah. Super tasty. Super tasty. Yeah. Yeah. That's me with a menudo right now. I have a, I still have a container of menudo left <laughs> over, and so my wife's gonna try to eat it, and I'm trying to eat like everything else out of the freezer slash produce and stuff. So it wasn't the most amazing thing ever, but it was the most amazing thing I've eaten this week. And this week. as we say in the business, sometimes it did not suck. They all can't no. be zingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where well, were we? Without further ado, let's start this list of getting to know Chef Melissa. Let's do it. First question. Why, why am I trying to sound like, like it's a dating side <laughs> slash game no, show? No, you're trying to sound like a movie trailer <laughs> in a world. Right. <laughs> well, let's go back and revisit the question. What was your favorite food as a kid? Pizza. I mean, that's kind of a given. That's. It is not even good. Pizza. Most most children. <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you remember the lunch? You know, lunches in elementary pizza and okay. junior high and high school pizza. I, they were that horrible. pizza was good. You didn't like yeah. it. Yeah, they were the, horrible, but they were so good because it was the, pizza. It like didn't the matter. French, if it, the French bread pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I think mine was like Jim Matt. That was the crust, but I still <laughs> ate it because it was pizza. Right. Sausage or pepperoni? Uh, both. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next question. What food reminds you of family? Pot roast. Pot roast? Why is that? Yeah. Um, it's just one of the things that I loved the most growing up, and my my grandma made it a lot, and I liked it. Nice. Yeah. Was it like the pot roast and mashed potatoes, or was it the pot roast and like the 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 baby potatoes that were thrown in there, or what what was it? So she used rusted potatoes and she would cut them into quarters and then like carrots, not baby carrots, so like real, real carrots, um, an onion and a seven roast, which comes from the chuck, a seven bone roast. So because the bone looks like the number seven. Yeah. Freaking delicious. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I can just imagine that right now. I I don't think (laughs) I ever had like we did pot roast from time to time, but like it was I think I always just made sandwiches out of it. It was just me, you know. Hey. There ain't nothing wrong with a, you know, couple days later pot roast. Um, no. For me, like on squishy white bread with mayo, I don't know how you'd like, but. Let's see, what, what what do I put it with? It's usually like monster cheese and like just yellow mustard. That's weird. <laughs> There's the woman who puts mayo, but I like mayo, so, Yeah. Okay. What's the most exotic or unusual dish you've ever had and how did it taste? I'm going to, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make this a twofer. Um, So I think the most exotic thing was guinea pig and it tasted like regret. Um, Guinea pig? uh Like the little, like the one, the versions Uh of the hamster that are bigger. Where did you try that at? Uh, Where was it? Some other country. I can't remember. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, for for real, for real. Uh, and then the most unusual, probably like fried shrimp heads for a local sushi spot here. Like, so. did you eat the actual heads or did you just suck all yeah, the Yeah, I did. Antennas and eyes and all of it. But deep, it's all deep like... Fried. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I can't really say anything because um, this past Labor Day weekend, we had a fish fry and we were frying like the uh, fins of the red snapper. And mm -hmm. I was eating those just like chips. So I can't really say anything. But I'm probably going to get... Have you ever done like the, the collar? Like right by yes. the gill. Oh, yeah. it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Well, I'll probably get us canceled by saying the most exotic dish I've ever had was a horse burger. And it actually yeah. tasted pretty good. Really? Oh, yeah. Was it closer know. to beef or like was it gamey? It was like lamb, kind of gamey, mm. but it was like a ground beef texture. It was lovely, actually. Um, yeah, I, I would do it again. Totally. Yeah. That's awesome. So let's see. What does your favorite food or beverage say about your personality? The man, here's like hard hit. You just right out of the loaded like question. The, the, I didn't Barbara make this, Walters this of slowly. like well, the Barbara Walters of food podcasting over here. <laughs> what is this sleeper cell of questions? Right. Um, so what does the food? What is it? What does the food I like what the is, most say about What does your favorite food or beverage say about your personality? Um. Okay. So I, I'm still going to have to go with pizza, but I mean, I really like a lot of foods a lot, a lot, a lot. Right. But that's the one that I keep coming back to. And so. It's funny you say pizza, that because I'm the same way. Pizza is one of those that checks all the boxes. And I think, yeah, I, I have a well-rounded personality. So. Yeah, nobody ever asked from that before. That's cool. Yeah, I was the same thing. Like mine is kind of like a pizza, and uh, even like the most basic pizza, you aim low and you score high. <laughs> I mean, like my personality. I know we said that we were going to make this all about you, but you know, I'll throw stuff about me in there as well because I'm sure the listeners don't care, but the, now they're going to have to hear it. You know, so they're going <laughs> to care. They're going to care. Gonna care. <laughs> oh, man, I care. Let's see. What okay, would you rather have free grocery store meals for the rest of your life or free Michelin dishes for the next 10 years? Um, what's a grocery store meal? You know, like like HB has the meal simples, the ones where you just pop in the oven. Some of them are like fully cooked, where you just gotta pop them in the microwave. Some of them you just have to like actually cook them like where it's prepared. And he, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. For the for the rest of my life versus Michelin starred meals for a year. For ten, years. For, the next for 10 years for the next 10 years oh dude i want the michelin star meals you see i am <laughs> on the opposite side where i'd rather get like the grocery store meals because it's pretty much planned out for you i mean even though michelin star is but like the portions are so tiny and i mm. eat so much you know mm. you know you do you do make a fair point there um but man i would have to leave the state to get it Right. So if I had it for free, maybe they were delivering it. I, that's the draw. I think that's the draw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I the those uh meals that are prepared, like they got all sorts of stuff, chicken and pasta, mm -hmm. and beef, Italian, yeah. Asian. Yeah, I mean, I'm all about it. So there's variety. So and they're always trying to reinvent themselves. I've I've eaten uh at a, like three Michelin starred restaurants. The most recent was um palette in san francisco and i did like a 10 course chef's tasting oh I, I was hungry afterward so I've you're not wrong about the portions too, yeah. like i also don't have like a, my full and hungry switch is, i don't know, I think it's broken but yeah <laughs> like yeah. i can push far past enough food um if the reasons are <laughs> just right like <laughs> you know yeah. so uh yeah, yeah. tiny portions, though tiny portions one of the one of the courses was literally um like a soft boiled quail egg that was stuffed. Huh. Yeah. Like a uh, devil like quail egg. Yeah, kind of, but it was put back together. Teeny tiny a deconstructed like, devil just, quail egg. <laughs> just like what? Is, I, don't I mean have it was that delicious. Kind of time or patience. I'm sorry. Well, it was delicious. Don't get me wrong, but it was yeah. like a half a bite. It was a half a bite. It was like eh. yeah. yeah. 
It's like, hmm, this is like a this is like a bougie tic tac. It's like a palate cleanser. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of small portions, maybe not small portions, but tying into that, would you rather have the superpower to eat without getting fat, or the superpower to eat everything for free? The oh, every, sound like everything for free, dude. Everything for free. It just sounds like you'd be loaded, you know, like you'd be rich. <laughs> rich! It's, it can't buy me happiness, but it could get me really close. And plus, you know, like, I'm already fat, so it doesn't matter. Like, I don't, <laughs> it's like, eh, nah. I mean, take you too, huh? that's the, that's, that's half the struggle right there. Like, who cares what I look like? It, for free? Shoot. Throw a Kel smooth you. hair every once in a while. Because then it. you can go to all the Michelin star restaurants and eat for free. That's right. Ah, I see your question. Man. Look at the solution. We're there making are. solutions out of problems. <laughs> oh. We're yeah, we are problem solvers. Who said the answers that aren't smart and resourceful? I'm just here for the food, dude. <laughs> <laughs> all smart, right, maybe <laughs> hungry. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> I'm lazy enough to where I just find the best half-assed solution, and usually it comes pretty quick. Hey. Right? <laughs> it works. So let's see. If you became your culture's food ambassador, what would be the three dishes that you recommend? And why would it be pizza, pizza, and pizza? To my culture of white people? Is that what we're talking about? I mean, you, whatever culture, you, whatever your culture is. Meatloaf? <laughs> okay. Chicken and dumplings. Okay. I'm going with the, the Caucasian culture, uh, in case anybody was still confused, because it's funny and also true. Meatloaf, chicken and dumplings, and apple pie. Apple pie. Apple pie. Yeah. Apple pie. I like that. See, you're overthinking it. You have to think <laughs> I'm Merca. So my three choices would be pizza, tacos, and uh, burger, 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 cheeseburger. Burger. Yeah. Uh, so See? now, but you underthought it because then you say that, and I'm like, you could make those three into one bomb item. That is very true. It's a pizza you know? burger taco. Ah, pizza. No, nope. it's a burger, taco burger pizza. Taco. <laughs> it's a taco I burger mean, pizza. <laughs> it sounds like something Taco Bell would come up with. Check it out. The Taco Bell formula, right? Taco, burger, pizza, pocket, explosion. Add, Keep adding the adjectives. You'll get there. Yeah, You'll get you, there. It's the same way that I used to come up with dishes. I would throw darts. I'd put words on a wall and throw darts, and wherever they landed, that's what I was going to go with. <laughs> you think I'm joking, but I'm not. It actually I, works. <laughs> I don't think you're joking. I think that's... That's some like that that's how chat GPT works. There's just like a robot throwing darts at work. Sheer brilliance and sheer laziness. I, I'm I'm on a kick right now where I'm calling myself lazy. I know I'm not, you are but, not lazy. You know, You're I work, just tired. Sir. I work a lot. You know? <laughs> and I don't say that in a negative connotation, but I come up with all sorts of awesome solutions. You're not lazy. Yeah. You're just streamlining. Hey. Like I said, aim low score high. That's what that's, that's where we're right. at. Manage so, expectations. So this would kind of tie into the whole COVID thing. If you lost your taste in all flavors except for one, what flavor would you like to keep? You could do sweet, bitter, sour, salty, or umami. That's hard because I like the two together so much. Uh Okay, well, if I can't have sweet and salty together, then I'm choosing I'm choosing umami. I would too, because mm -hmm. I feel like you could still get a little salt kick out of the umami. Mm -hmm. All right, like miso, soy. Yes. Yeah. See. Yes. Wheeze is smart. <laughs> Wicked smart. Super smart. Yeah, you super at. smart. You at. So, if you could only eat one type of cuisine for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? Sushi. The, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. Because what I like about sushi is you can have it cold, you can have it hot. I say hot because I like getting the trash can rolls like where it's deep fried with cream cheese, and it makes me yes. happy. But then you also have like your healthier sushi where it's actual sushi, you know? 
So. Have you had the Have you had the rolls that are that use like cucumbers or daikon or cabbage? Um, they're like it's kind of like a riff on a regular uh, maki, but it has like uh, no rice. Have you had those? I have actually, yeah, and I like them too. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind once in a while. Yeah, no, I don't mind it at all. What's your go-to sushi order? Anytime a place has a uh, spider roll, I'm always about that. Or a Boston roll. I don't know why. Those are the two that I'm just like, oh, I have to find it first, you know? Really? Yeah. I'm really, par I'm really partial to like a Philly, um, but I usually go for like the rainbow roll. Um, and then oh, yeah, every really now good. and then I'll get in the mood for like the spicy tuna. Those are always good. They're simple, but they're good. So if we're not talking rolls, what about um, like the individual stuff like do you go for like flying fish eggs tamago you know nigiri like any of that stuff urchin i don't discriminate i like it all like when it comes to sushi i legit yeah. love it all you yeah. know um it i finally started eating the uh the ginger that comes with it like i never used like i didn't want all that i didn't want the wasabi i just wanted like the straight sushi now it's like a little bit of wasabi, maybe a little bit of ginger. And oh my gosh, it's so much better. It's the same way with me and pickles and burgers. I'm slowly coming around to it. Not that I'm yet. so proud of you. I'm so right. proud of you. And, uh, <laughs> the world needs to know about how great I am about accepting pickles into my life. What about dill as an herb? Where, where I'm are you at with that? that as well? What? Slowly but surely. Yeah. People, people can change, damn it. I'm telling you. <laughs> So if you were the queen of the world, what would you make everyone eat? This is a two-parter. Let's answer the first one. If I were the queen of the world, world, what would I make people eat? Huh. Dessert first. <laughs> 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 well played. I was just going to say, if I was the queen of the world, I'd make everyone eat sushi. Hey. hey. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> so what would you ban? Oh, uh, truffles, my guy. <laughs> well played. <laughs> well played. I'm not as multifaceted as you think. I have to have, have one track mind over some things. Truffles <laughs> banned. Banned forever. Yeah, I I like some truffles. It's better um, things to put on fries. Just stop it. I I do like truffle fries, but I also enjoy truffles, like a little bit of truffles with my steak. But I don't do yeah. it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Potatoes, red meat. I think that I those it. are the only two acceptable things for truffles. And maybe some foie gras from time to time. But that's just me. <laughs> oh yeah. So let's see. I would if I could ban. Ooh, what would I ban? I would probably ban Cuban. You would ban Cuban. The, the stinky, stinky spice. Oh, it smells man. like armpit. I could do this. Of course, after you know a long day, I took a shower, so I don't smell bad. But you know, Cuban's the one thing I would ban. Oh man, that makes me so sad. I could have said pickles. It's not a world I want to live in. Oh. That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so now worse. this next question, it digs deep. Okay, then. What meal made you cry? What meal made me cry? Hmm. That's a real head scratcher, TM. Um... <laughs> I could do this until you come up with an answer. So, you know, just... Okay, so I did get to knock an item off my bucket list in 2021. I got yeah. to go to the Great Gatsby House on Long Island. Um, and uh, one of my favorite TV shows was filmed there, Royal Pains. So um, it's Ohika Castle on, on Long Island. And... Um, yeah, I did. I think I teared up for being in the main dining room with all the curtains and the chandeliers and everything else. And I was actually eating um, a steak. So it was a petite filet with a crab cake. Uh -huh. uh, I don't 
know if, I, if it was a combination of the experience, but that's the only time I can recall um, food making me cry, not me like crying and then eating. Mm, womp, womp. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> you, you know, I don't think I've ever had a meal that made me cry. Can't, yeah. can't say I have. I might have eaten a meal crying because I was sad, but I've mm -hmm. never eaten a meal where it's moved me enough to cry. I That's think a I show a different emotion. Like if I if something just moves me that much, like I am, my eyes just light up and I get mm -hmm. all excited. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I kind of nerd out versus crying. So what food makes you have that reaction then? It, you know, it all just depends. Like it, it, like I've been to some restaurants, you know, there was one in San Antonio called Alora and the chef that, the, that runs it, he used to work at French Laundry and they made, I think it was swordfish. Yeah. And it was just, it was the best swordfish I've ever had in my life. And like, that was just, oh my gosh, you know, I've. I've gotten to eat in Yauntville, like, was it the uh, ad hoc, the French, mm -hmm. the, the bakery, uh, Bouchon mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like, I was just so excited more than anything to be there that right. I didn't cry. I was just like, oh my gosh, you know. Now, there is one on my bucket list. I want to say it's called uh, L Ideas in Chicago. Yeah. I don't know if I would cry there, but. I would be super excited and I would probably try to give the chef a hug because he's one be of like super duper stoked. <laughs> Philip Boss, if you ever listen to the Food for Thought cast, I am a huge fan. I don't think he ever will, but you know, still. <laughs> hey, stranger things have happened. Who right? knows? Who knows who's listening? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question. If you were to die tomorrow, what would your last meal be? I would take it you'd be on death row. Hmm. So I'm going to I'm going to remove the obvious caveat that like you can ask for anything, but that doesn't mean they have to give it to you. They just have to give as close as possible. Right. And uh, I think we all know prison kitchens are ill equipped. So. Um, I, I I want I want the classic New England steam dinner. Clams, no mussels, a whole lobster, potatoes, lots of butter, baby corn on the cob. That sounds Rolls. pretty good. I actually want that right now. <laughs> That's legit. That's what I want. That's what I want. A couple would, little sausages in there, I guess. I it, I mean, if if it's going to be my last meal and I know I'm going to, you know, die, I would just go all out and try to clog my arteries as much as possible. So I'd have like a foie gras on pizza. Yeah. Oh, that does sound good. <laughs> that sounds really good. Right? Red or white sauce, though. Water on pizza. What else is on there? I would mm. still do red sauce. It would have to be a bomb ass white. I mean, red sauce. A white sauce would be good too. But I feel like the acidity and the fat from the foie gras would go hand in hand. Like you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like like the tomatoes and all that go with it. Versus like a white sauce that is usually you know more of a cream based, fattier. In my opinion, I feel like it would just be too much, too heavy. You know. Well, I feel like. You know, though, of course, this is extremely hypothetical, uh, but I feel like the red sauce would be a little bit too, too acidic. Um, like I know foie gras is really rich and it, you know, yeah. that's why people cut it with things like Sancerre and dried fruit and, you know, sometimes citrus and blah, blah, blah. But I think that, um, I don't know, I think you could get away with like a yellow plum tomatoes in that instance right like totally, a, chunky, yeah. a chunky sauce with like a little thyme and tarragon and would you put cheese though oh yeah uh, i know it's, it's a hard one yeah. it's a hard one a I lot think of like oregano and thyme and like herbs i make it real herby and then yeah. throw some mushrooms cook yeah cook the mushrooms in the foie gras fat some sherry out. some sherry mm. maybe yeah, yeah. Mm. brandy all right. Yeah. So oh, next topic. The weirdest pizza ever. Well, you know what? It would be so good. I'm super intrigued, though. I'm super intrigued. We're going to have to try that now. Yes. So questions for foodies. What mm -hmm. is your guilty pleasure food? 
Oh yeah. I think it's a tough loaded question too, no? Uh I mean there's definitely more than one, though. So... My guilty pleasure food. Hmm. That's it could be anything, rough. yeah. That's really rough. Um, Mine is just spaghetti and meat and sauce. It's simple. Uh, like people yeah. look at you and say, "Bro, you you're you've cooked for nearly twenty years and spaghetti and meat." Yeah, spaghetti and meat sauce. Simple. Probably have you to know, go with like a grilled cheese. Ah, uh, that's a good. I'll one. I'll jazz it up, but like that's kind of like a go to like. Oh, I, I should probably eat a salad or some protein or what. You know what? I'm just going to make nah. a grilled cheese. Um, Salads are overrated. And you know how I roll some funky condiments with weird flavor <laughs> combinations. Like. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of something else that would be a guilty, but like I don't eat stuff like that. Nah, can't even think about it now. What's your favorite comfort food on a bad day? Favorite comfort food on a bad day. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the last time I had a bad day. Had a bad day. Yeah. Had a bad day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in the background. Uh, uh, <laughs> it was it was that guy. Um. Interesting. Gosh. I would say sushi for me. Is it? Press the hell out. Oh. We See? talked about that in the comfort food episode. We have talked about so that. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes I seek out comfort food right when it's cold, when the weather's crappy, um, you know. But trying to think about if I had a really bad day or if I just had like a touch of the blues, I think what I I think what I think ultimately go to is uh, fast food, oddly enough, and kind of like too yeah. much of it. And too much of it. <laughs> like it just turns into a party. Yeah. So I, yeah, I think like people need triple cheese or something from Whataburger and bacon and all that stuff. But I don't know for me, sushi, like if I have just like the worst day ever, I'll just tell my wife, let's go get sushi. And she'll say, okay, either you're really hungry or you had a bad day. Oh, she <laughs> loves me. Oh, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Let's see. yeah, yeah. What food should everyone try at least once in their life? Snails. Snails. Mm hmm. Hmm. I like that. Yeah. Like snails. Hmm. I would, I'm still going to stay with, stick with my foie gras. Cause like, yeah. there's some people who are like, Oh, what is that? Oh, I don't like, you know, Oh, never... Steve. I feel like we're missing like the dark horse though, in this competition right now. How so? The one food everybody should try sweetbreads, man. <laughs> well, I, I would say that, but I eat that pretty often like it's for me sure. it's fun so i mean yeah, for, you know what that's like good, yeah that's though it's yeah, uh, i guess you're right i didn't think of it like that yeah mm. oh foie gras is really good though. Horse, though? <laughs> no oh. <That'd> be kind <laughs> <of weird. laughs> no steven enough with the horses <laughs> all right what you're gonna say for this next one what's the most overrated food ingredient in your opinion well we don't have to go there you can't put me in a box you can't put me in a box, Steve. I already know what you're the gonna most, say. The most overrated. I mean, I, but I think there's more than one overrated food thing out there. Um, Do tell, my friend. Mm, mm, Do tell. Mm, mm, the most overrated ingredient, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Food ingredient. <laughs> If you say it, I'm already I'm gonna already know what you're gonna say. I mean, it's so easy though. I was trying to think of something different. Yeah. Mm. Overrated, huh? Overrated. Tell me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's truffle oil, dude. <laughs> I thought you were just gonna say truffle, period. Most most truffle oil doesn't even have truffles in it. That's true. Yeah. It's that overrated. is. It's overrated. Very, very true. Okay. Ooh. So what about you? The most overrated ingredient, in my opinion. Ooh. Let's see. I would have to say... So I'm trying to think of, like, something that I usually don't say. 
I would I would still have to say dill. You know? Really? Really? They're, well, I mean, I could say green beans, but like green like people I don't ever hear t- people talk about like, oh, green beans are so good. I hear people talk about dill like, oh, it's such a nice, bright, refreshing they, herb and this and that, and you know. They had their they had their day though. They had their day, the green beans and the hairy coverts. They they had um, their day in the sun where they had to be on every single menu. Every mm-hmm. single menu was like starch, meat, herico bears. Asparagus went through the same thing. You know what? I'm going to take mine back. I'm okay. going to take it with herbs, but I'm going to say microgreens. Yes. 100% yes. So yeah. rated. Don't get me wrong. Oh, I like microgreens. I think they make... They make dishes look very pretty. I also think that they are very fragrant or like they're very flavorful. But like there was a point where every one of their moms were using them and it's cool and all. But at the same time, it's like, well, wait a minute. Like you don't even know what you're doing. Like you're putting, you know, baby like micro carrots and all this stuff on like something that doesn't Mm -hmm. it doesn't Mm -hmm. taste good. So, not yeah. only does it not taste good, but like it doesn't go with it. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, people just are just an afterthought. People are just throwing them on there just to throw yeah. it on there and be pretty. It's like, but then they're not like putting those flavors together. So, well, yeah. I if we're there, then I have one for you: the purple edible orchid. Purple edible orchid. A little garnish flower what? that goes on every freaking plate between the year <laughs> 20, you know, 2002 and 2010. Like, yeah, 65 I, cents a piece. And if you go to any, any island, you can find fields full of them. Just ridiculous, dude. I can pass on them as well. Mm-hmm. I, I just like, yeah, it's cool, but eh, I prefer, <laughs> like, I'll go with my overrated microgreens because I at least know how to balance all those flavors of my, of, you know, my meal and, you know, my garnish, you know? So, you know, what was the most, the most just bizarre use of microgreens that I ever experienced? Hmm. You used them to garnish a salad. Saw that in a hotel. I was like, no, we're not doing saladception. What is happening right now? Like, dude, I can't. (laughs) I, I, that person just needs to hang up their chef coat. You just... know what? You know what makes an excellent salad garnish? Croutons? Bacon. Oh, bacon. yeah, croutons too. <laughs> bacon croutons. Bacon croutons. Bacon, we can fry your croutons, croutons in your bacon fat. Yeah, done. Yes. Yes. So is there a particular food or ingredient that you just absolutely cannot stand and why? I feel like these are some of the same questions, just worded differently. <laughs> um, anise, uh, like the seed. Yeah. I like the, in small doses, it's good. But I agree with you because if you have too much, it just you get nothing but licorice, and you're like, ugh, gross. I so I used to hate fennel in all its forms. I'm still not a huge fan of fennel seeds, um, but. You know, at least with all the parts of the fennel, like the fronds and the bulb and the and this, you know, the tops, right? You can apply that to different dishes. You know, you can candy it, you could pickle it, you could caramelize it, you could roast it, right? You could make a nice puree, like whatever you wanted to do. Um, and you're gonna get different angles on that flavor, but dude, aniseed is just that's just what it tastes like. It's just licorice, and and I don't care for licorice at all. Aniseed, Not at all. yeah. Mm-hmm. They're not very good. Yeah. One I can't stand. No, well, there's a, co- a couple. Yeah. Cumin. Green beans. Those are the two I just can't stand. <laughs> I'll take dill over those two if I had to pick. Jeez. Really? Really? Yeah. Um, mm. I'm not going to ask you that one because I already asked you that one. Um, What's the best meal that you've ever had and where? The best meal I ever had was the first chef's tasting I ever went to at uh, Number Nine Park in Boston um, from Barbara Lynch, and um, I remember one of the items on it was uh, pan-seared uh, Japanese shad 
with green pea foam. And it was really, yeah. really amazing. Yeah, it was really good. Really, really good. Yeah. Hmm. I'd be about that. Yeah. I mean, and that was probably like, I'm old and that was a long time ago. And the meal was memorable. Like I could tell you other courses too. And I mean, it was that memorable. So yeah. Which is I great. One of my favorite meals. I, you know what? I've, I've got two. Um, one of them was a, like a brunch place in San Francisco called Zazi. Mm. And their brunch was like, they were just, banging out food and it was delicious out of this tiny mm -hmm. little kitchen and it i mean like the mimosas were awesome they did like a creme brulee french or a creme brulee oatmeal they did like their french toast was the bomb their their uh, benedicts were awesome like and it was just so, such simple food but it was so damn good right and then my other favorite is uh superior seafood in new orleans mm. you go during happy hour and you get Oysters on the half shell, oyster Rockefeller, and their frozen French 75s, hands down. <laughs> favorite meal. Hands down. So I will say that in New Orleans at Pat O'Brien's, I had like some of the most amazing fried alligator I'd ever had. So yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, New Orleans just has lots of lots food. of treasures to be had there. But I want to know more about the creme brulee oatmeal. Did they brulee yeah. the top and you got to break it yeah. with a spoon? Well, oh, so like, really? it's, it's your bowl of oatmeal. Yes. And then like in the middle of that, they put like just, I guess they empty out like a little creme brulee, you know, mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. ramekin, put that on top and brulee it on top. Holy crap, it's good. I don't know if it's still on their menu, but I mean, that place just, I went there for the first time when my cousin was getting his white coat ceremony or graduating from medical school. I don't remember. He was, yeah. he was something important, you know, because he's awesome like that. That sounds but just incredible, dude. <laughs> him and his wife, when they were, I guess, engaged, they took me there, and I was just like, holy cow. I could eat every meal here, you know? But we we have yeah. to we have to make a little we have to have a little side conversation about this. There is something so intriguing and exciting about like composed oatmeal dishes. I know this sounds silly, but when you go to a fun little brunch place or a little breakfast place and they have like a, it's like a skillet with like, they've made homemade oats and put all the things on top and inside or whatever. But you think about oats, right? Like grown to feed horses, super duper cheap, really, really nutritious, right? Something as humble and as simple as that. But Dude, I will lose my mind if I go in somewhere and it's like what a blueberry muffin oatmeal and it's like $19. I'm like, please sign me up. <laughs> Extra streusel, right? Like I just, it's something about it. I'm like, I cannot pass it up. And creme brulee is one of those things where if it's on a menu somewhere, I'm ordering it. It doesn't matter if I just ate 10 courses. You got creme brulee? Yes, one for here, one to go. Thank you. Like I just. Chocolate chip cookies and lemonade. Those are my three things. If it's on the menu, I have to try it. Lemonade, really? Oh yeah, dude! Wow, like, it could be like the shittiest lemonade or the best lemonade. Mm -hmm. I have to try it. Mm. I don't know. There's something about it. It's just good, you know. Yeah, creme brulee is definitely mine. Oh yeah. Um, Same. As far as as far as hot food is concerned, uh, I think we've talked before. But if I go anywhere that has a hanger steak on the menu, like I'm ordering that. Um, yeah. Hanger steak is phenomenal. Uh, what about a what about a starter? What's a starter that you won't pass up? Ooh, for some reason, it's a uh, spinach artichoke dip. If I really? tell I gotta get it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel that I've eaten a lot of spinach artichoke dip in my day. Um, having worked at Houston's, I ate uh, loads of it, um, and so I go through phases where I'm like, no, thank you, no more. Um, but I love spinach <laughs> artichoke dip a lot, a lot. So. Me too. Yes. So what food did you think you were going to hate but ended up loving? Mm. Uh, fish eggs. I didn't Ooh. think I would like those all. Yeah. Yep. Ooh. I didn't like the way it looked. I was like really worried about the texture. Love it. All of it. Masago, yeah, you know, Ocetra, all of it. Mine would be liver and onion. <laughs> what? <are> you? <laughs> Excuse me can't even reach the mute button fast enough. I was like, right. oh, it's happening. Oh. It's happening. We're alive, people. Sort of. I, I, um, this is not a simulation and it wasn't a glitch. It was a real human sneeze. 
beep beep. Um, so yeah. liver, you said liver and onions. Liver and onion. I love liver and onion. I love liver and onions so much. I remember like <laughs> growing up, um, you, you you hear like it's liver and and onion and you know what kid loves liver and onion? Not very many. And mm -hmm. I think I was like in, I was in sixth grade. My mom was in the hospital for a procedure. And so we took her some lubies because she was craving liver and onion. And for some reason, I wanted to try it. And she let me try it. And from there on, I was like, I think I love liver and onion. Steve, yeah. you you have got to get out of my head, dude. Because I was just about to be like, I would eat it at home. I would make my own. I would eat it at lubies. Like, <laughs> right? Yes. Lubies made yes. it so good, too. It's really, really good. So what food combo sounds weird? but is actually amazing. Well, there's the stereotypical, um, it'll earn you the, it'll earn you the question, uh, are you pregnant? Whether that's an appropriate question or not, but it's pickles <laughs> and peanut butter. Um, it's something umami, nutty, fatty, like sour, you know, crunchy, creamy. That's, that's a really good one. I stand by it. I can't say I would ever eat that. <laughs> Wait, you don't like you don't like pickles. <laughs> That's true. I, you know, this one sounds really weird, but I did it. I went for it, and it worked. But vanilla and mushrooms, like a vanilla okay. mushroom marmalade, and it was awesome. All right, walk me through that. So I don't remember that how sounds I, came, <laughs> I don't know how I came upon it, but I did. And it's not like you're putting a ton of vanilla, like to complement. Like you're you're. Um, you're getting a, a good sear. You're getting a good um, flavor out of your mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And you add just a little bit of that vanilla to it, like that essence, if you will. And you add just enough. And surprisingly, it's good. It's even so, a recipe in my book. So what kind of mushrooms? I just go simple uh, button mushrooms just because they're, you know, they can take on anything that you put with it, you know. Mm. So that's why I go with that one. Yes. That's, uh, I know <laughs> it sounds crazy, but it's not bad when you do it yes. right. Yes. So um, it's really no, it's no secret um, I, for those who know me. I will try it food for shock value. Like I'm not above it. Um, that's the, it's the low hanging fruit of food comedy, right? I will, I will try combinations of flavors to just say I did just out of curiosity, sometimes boredom. Um, but I really do like a lot of odd things together. Where you, wouldn't, where you wouldn't think that they would go together. Have you, have you ever had eyeballs, like fish eyeballs, or like when you? Uh, like that? Well, I mean, like I ate a fried shrimp head and it had the eyes, yeah, there but you go. not intentionally. Like, but I, I didn't seek it out. Um, yeah. But yeah, I like things like I think um, brie goes really, really well with lemon curd, right? I kind of that, like, yeah cheese and crackers type situation. Um, as a kid, I tried soy sauce and vanilla ice cream. Didn't hate it. Uh, I've yeah. heard I mean, that so, that's actually pretty good. Can't say I've had it. It's 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 great. Um, yeah. Well, going to the un other side of that then, what food should never be eaten together? Hmm. Pickles and peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> Stephen has said, "Good day, sir." I said, "Good day." Good day. Um, nice which two foods should never be eaten together? I do not like. Um, I don't like like. It's almost too specific to be an answer. I don't like dairy. With seafood, but I need to explain this. Okay. Tell me. It's like if it's in the preparation of a dish, cool. Like lobster bisque, full of cream, delicious, delicious, yummy, right? Mm -hmm. Butter goes with all sorts of fish and shrimp. But when somebody wants to do like cheese with fish, I don't like it. I don't like it. So you don't like cream, like cream cheese with your sushi? Or are you talking like a different I don't never consider cream cheese cheese. I know it is. I know it is. <laughs> Still dairy. I mean, like a rennet, like cheddar, 
right? Like it, like okay, cheddar cheese. So I've seen on a couple of menus around, right? Like, I used to think, uh, okay, here's a really good example, and everybody will be super mad about, it, and that's fine because these are this is my answer. I don't care what you think. We're getting to know um, else. Like shrimp quesadillas. No, thank I you. I was just about to say that. <laughs> I don't mind a shrimp quesadilla, dude. Uh, you can have my portion then. It's great. Fun. <laughs> now, I wouldn't have a fish quesadilla. That just is weird, you know? That's really, really weird. Well, but if you take the dairy off and you put the fish in a corn tortilla with cabbage and some – like, I'll have fish tacos all day long, you know? But just don't put the yeah. cheese. Like, it's weird. I don't like it. <laughs> well, let's see. Um, what's your – Go to dish when family or friends come over. Uh, it's either uh, braised chicken thighs or short ribs. Mine is either sweetbreads or poppers. Yeah, yeah. Just all, yep. it's the easiest thing to do for me. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. It used to be fajitas, but I mean, I don't do a whole heck of a lot of fajitas to begin with. So yeah. there's also that. Yeah. So let's say your boyfriend was not a foodie. Would that be a deal breaker? <clears throat> what boyfriend? I'm sorry, Steve. I really couldn't. I couldn't resist. Um, I will any any doorway to self deprecation. I'll um, <laughs> it is it's very the, funny. The lowest, <laughs> it's the lowest form of comedy. Um, so, yeah, if they weren't a foodie, how would I handle it? It would, no, it wouldn't be a deal breaker. Wait a minute. Oh, it's 100% a deal breaker. Well, hold on. So one of the reasons why I say food fans on this podcast and not foodies is because I hate that word. And it's way overused. Um, but if they weren't a person who, you know, was willing to try new things food-wise, then I that's a deal breaker. So if you have to say the word foodie and you mean like, I'm a culinarian or I like th this and this and that. Yeah. It's kind of a deal breaker, right? Because I'm not going to live in a, in a like meat and taters world. Like, nope. Can't do it. Yeah. I, it really doesn't make a big difference to me. I really? Don't it makes Now it you're really making me sound really shallow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where we differ just a little bit. Like <laughs> it's not a, I mean, it makes it a little bit more challenging when you go out to eat, but because I've dated people, like before I got married, I dated some people who are not foodies. And that's fine. You know, it's whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, they can, you know, you can be eating all your good stuff and they'll have their chicken tenders or whatever. And that's cool. <laughs> right? As long as you can eat. But, you know, like, let's say it was going to be something exotic, like, uh, or upscale or whatever the case is. It's like, well, you know what? I'm going to go without you because you're yeah. probably not going to like anything. And it just makes it a little bit less expensive. <laughs> so I mean, it's you fine. To, yeah. You have to look for the silver lining you everywhere. Have, yeah. You know. From an economical standpoint. Hey, I mean, I get it. It's not everybody's thing, right? Like, you know, not everybody's obsessed with finding new flavors and wants to try the next thing and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, sometimes you, you want somebody to enjoy it with too. So um, yeah. I'd say, I would say, I mean, it might not break the whole deal, but it would it would super cause me to hesitate. I'll put it that way. Mm, yeah, but I mean, I also have friends who are very picky too, and you know, they're they're just as great in my book. So, well, cool. of course, I mean, and there are some really legitimate reasons that people don't like certain foods, right? Because people have like sensory things and can't deal with textures, and yeah. you know, maybe there's uh, allergies or you know, I I totally get it. I totally get it. Um, everybody has their reasons, and a lot of them are really legit. So. No shade, yeah. no shade there. They make up for it by being good company. Hey, so winning personality. Were, what? A winning personality. Yeah, there you go. So if you had a restaurant, what would the name of your restaurant be and what would you serve? Man. Right. Um, if I had a restaurant, I have no idea what the name would be. I probably have a binder somewhere with like 50 restaurant ideas in it um, over the years and then uh, I just decided that being my own boss was like, not what I wanted to do. Um, but what would I serve? Uh, small plates all the way, small plates and shareables. Nice. And it would be, it would be seasonal. Like what would it be called? Well, it would be like quarterly. Yeah. I have no idea. Reagan's. N no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. 
it would have some chefy name. Uh, it would be like herd or <laughs> like um gosh, it would be a pun. Knowing me, it would be a pun. It would be a food pun of some kind. So see, I would just have a sandwich shop. Like I remember growing up, like when I was in culinary school. I, I tell my grandma that I would name a restaurant after her. Like her maiden name was Isasi, mm. which is I think Sicilian. I know it's Italian, mm. but and I said and I told her I would make the best Italian food. Now it's like I just want a sandwich shop. I don't want like a giant menu. I don't want all that nonsense. I just want like to make what I like, and I like sandwiches. Sandwiches make me happy, so that's what I would serve. Well, as I far would, as the name, couldn't tell you. Probably, I probably would, hate both. I would definitely have some sort of operation where the menu was on a blackboard and there were yeah. like three or four, yeah. there were like three or four uh, rotating like regular items. The menu would be handwritten on a blackboard and it would be, um, you know, local produce and local items and, you know, a little farm to table but not douchey enough to say farm to table, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that was for you, Michael Nip. <laughs> yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah, see. So next question, what's on your food bucket list? What is on my food bucket list? Um, gosh, I feel like it's organized by city. Um, hmm. That's, that's, that's rough. That's not... That's not just like a, that's not like just a, you know, one answer question. That's, that's, that's loaded. Well, it could be a couple. Few. Loaded. Food bucket list. Um, in the Himalayas. Okay. Uh, Nepalese food. Um, for sure. Um, Sicily. Uh, Scotland. Yeah. I can't even, I have to give you like a whole region, a whole country. That's, 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 that's how much, um, Love to do food tour of Canada. Hey Fiji, sure. you know parts parts unknown, you know. True. Yeah, it's how I, I like to travel. <laughs> that does sound pretty cool. Yeah. Right. My my immediate bucket list would be L ideas in Chicago, and then uh, I've never been to French Laundry. I want to go to French Laundry just mm -hmm. to see yeah. the experience. Um, but yeah, that would be cool to like, just go visit, you know, like some random country and just street food, you know, uh, Ireland, I go, go to her Scotland and eat haggis. I always want to eat that dude. Well, haggis is great. I would love to have it there. Um, I kind of have this crazy idea. It's been milling around in the back of my head, you know, for when I'm wealthy one day, it's probably never going to happen, which I'm totally fine with, but, um, you know the show Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives? Yes. I want to do that, but I want to go into people's homes and eat their family specialty. So, and couch surf. Yeah. 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 That would be pretty cool. Okay, yeah. let's see. Um, would you consider frozen food as good food? Why or why not? Frozen food is excellent. Frozen food is, you know flash frozen and seals the nutrition in the fruits and veggies. Um, not all frozen foods, convenience food. And I like it. I don't mind. I, it either. I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. It, it so. makes it a lot easier. You just throw a bunch of food on a pan, uh, sheet pan yeah. dinner, if you will. Yeah. I think time, it's good. you know, you can shop around to find quality frozen items, but time is a commodity and you can't get that back. Like you have a limited amount of time. So it's like, you did make the most of it, and if that's what you have to do, then that's what you do. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, let's see. On a scale of one to ten, how picky of an eater are you? I guess one would be the least picky, <laughs> like zero. <laughs> yeah, same. I'm like a point five. Point five. I'd be like yeah. a three, probably. I'd be a. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not too picky, mm -hmm. but. There are times where I will be a snob and I don't care. <laughs> Let's see. Last question for the night. And then we will have to do this more questions in another episode. But uh, absolutely. Are you particular about where your food comes from? Why or why not? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, I'm, 
I'm particular in the way that I want to know where it comes from. Okay. But not so picky about it that I will spend exorbitant amounts of money. So it's like, I would prefer that my, you know, proteins be sustainably raised or, you know, pastured, you know, whatever. Right? Yeah. But if at some point it becomes like financially impossible to do, then I pick the next best alternative, which might be like organic or the free range or whatever. Like, so okay. eggs, for example, right. You know, um, but yeah, I am kind of particular, you know, I, I, uh, I, I don't, I think it's important to know where it comes from. I can't always control whether or not I am able to get it from where I want. Right. But I yeah. think it's important to know. So I do care. Yep. I, I care, but at the same time, I, I do care where it comes from. You know, it, unfortunately, like if you're going to get like a protein, like you want to know that your, your meat, your, your meat's coming from like a, processing plant that you know like has good food standards things like that mm -hmm. and, you know mm -hmm. now with you know uh the fda the usda all that stuff like you know food goes through so much uh quality control but i think like slaughterhouses like i like that part sucks about um you know the food industry you know animals have to die and i'm not a vegan or a hippie by any means but like <laughs> things like that i do care about like yeah. if if i know that something's coming from like Asia, I don't really go for like the tilapia and the shrimp and all that that come from there, like you get at the grocery stores. That one I probably will pass on. But if I get like Gulf shrimp or something along those lines, uh, tilapia that's from a Texas farmer, even though I don't eat tilapia at all, like I'm just using that as an example. Yeah, or like, it's like a catfish. I, I don't eat tilapia at all either. And that's probably part of the 0.5 where I am on the pickiness scale. Yeah. And it's not because I think I'm better than anybody else or anything. It's just like I, I don't really care for it. So I'll eat catfish, but I won't eat tilapia. Yeah. A lot of feeders. Catfish has to be fried within an inch of its life with like mountains of tartar <laughs> sauce. But yes, I will throw down. I will throw down on some catfish. So <laughs> yeah. So. Catfish and some mac and cheese. Fish and cheese. There you go. No. no. That's like soul food right there, man. That's good. I don't care what you say. That's but one of those, that's one of those times where I'd be like, can I have the plate with the 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 separate the separations on it? Parts <laughs> right. I can I have a compartment plate so it's not touching. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like I do care where my stuff comes from. I want to know that like you, you know, like you want to know that it's sustainable and you know, it, it's just coming from a place of like, you're helping like a business. Uh, uh, you well, know, I like, I like, yeah, to do I mean, farmers and stuff yeah. like that. Cause I just think it's a better story versus even though like all of our food comes from farms, you know, like, the mm -hmm. high commercialized um, overproduction farms and stuff like that. Like it, they're providing for millions of people, you know, and that's yeah. pretty impressive, but I yeah. always like the mom and pop farms too, you know? Yeah, of course. I mean, so originally the question, right. When you asked, you were like, well, are you particular about where it comes from? And everybody thinks like this, the, the main source, but it, I like it when you break it down even further than that. Um, yep. I like my, if it was like a prepared item, I want to know that it came some from somewhere that has um, that treats their people well, not just the product, right? Do you treat your people well? Do you take care of the product? Is there love and care in this? Uh, and are they serving their community? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So, well, those are all the questions we have for this evening. <laughs> there are plenty more that we can do, but we'll have yeah. to save that for another episode. Get that to know was... Chef Michelle. Why am I gonna call Michelle? Ooh. Melissa. Wow. One, my, buddy. my buddy Michelle must be talking about me. Strike mm. one, buddy. I'm gonna throw no. a shoe at you. Well, I didn't have uh, trouble today, so therefore <laughs> I, I redeem myself with that. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Well, yeah. this was a blast. Uh we yeah. got to know each other a little bit better. And then hey, listeners and viewers, you know, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or if you're watching on YouTube, or if you do both, you're our favorite. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And we hope we hope that you got to know us better too. Ask yourself these questions. Figure out where you stand. What do you care about? What's important to you? And and hey, some of them are just fun. So yeah, yeah. this was awesome. This was yeah. awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna have to share that. We'll have to share that link. 
And that way people can, yeah, you're right. That's a totally good idea. I like yeah. the way you think. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, sometimes, sometimes the way I think. Good ideas from time to time. A little good idea every (laughs) once in a while. Every once in a while. Steve, this was a blast. Let's get out of here. (laughs) Well, yeah. You have a wonderful night. Thank you all for listening. All that good stuff that comes with it, too. All that good stuff. Find Steven on chefstevengonzalez.com. Find me and Steven at thefoodforthoughtcast.com. And then the Food for Thought Cast. Facebook and Instagram. Let us know what you're cooking. Let us know what you're eating. Let us know how your year's going. What are you doing with food? And uh, who are you really? Answer some questions. Just answer the questions. But most of all, questions. But most of all, have a good week and thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. That's a wrap for today. Until the next episode of the Food for Thought Cast. Make good food, eat good food, share it, and be kind to one another. Thanks so much for listening today. You are part of what makes us special, and we are so glad you joined us. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and leave a review. Just like food, delicious podcasts are better when you share them with others. Come back for seconds wherever podcasts are served, and we'll catch you in the next episode of the Food for Thought Cast. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the Food for Thought Cast or at www.foodforthoughtcast.com where you can link to all podcast players or you can send us an email at foodforthoughtcmc at gmail.com.